go with the top five worst teams according to the brickyard yeah and as we know as being fans of the brickyard and being the co-hosts of the brickyard that these <laughs> lists here the worst teams and the best teams these are officially the most um authentic most accurate and most reliable top five teams and top five bottom teams in the nfl so what you hear on this show and on this clip on this youtube channel this is the most accurate form of content on on television you may think it's casual but you're wrong you're wrong this is the truth and the truth starts now so <laughs> our top five worst teams in the nfl number five it might surprise you as they are as low as they might be and that is the new york giants last week we saw them as okay. the third worst team in the nfl but almost escaping with the win against the giants tyrod taylor actually throwing the ball down the field unlike somebody else who's on that team who is also the quarterback making 160 million dollars <laughs> so the giants you know I, I gotta move up the rankings here they are not the third worst team this year at this point they are the fifth worst team granted they haven't scored a touchdown in three weeks that's 180 minutes of time they have not scored a touchdown in over 200 minutes but hey you know what they nearly beat the bills with josh allen and all those other guys so i'm gonna give them a nice little you're number five. Good job, Giants. You're moving up. And believe it or not, number four, I have the Shepherd University quarterback himself, the Lowly Bears, at number four on their, this list. Their first appearance. Their first appearance. They weren't on it last week because of the win that they got against the Commanders. But don't worry, guys. <laughs> You're back. You're back like a bad rash. And here we are. We got the Bears at number four. We saw this embarrassment against the Vikings, who this team loves giving away the ball. But this time around, they got the ball back from, and that being the Bears. Josh uh, Justin Fields is gone, so now we're relying on the Division II Shepherd University star, arm wrestling, um, you know, inherited guy in Trent Badgett. And without Justin Fields, even though Justin Fields has performed pretty poorly, Trent Badgett just isn't going to do them any favors. So I have the Bears at number four, believe it or not. At number three, this might also surprise you, as they were... Higher on this list last week, but you know what? They did go out there and score two touchdowns pretty quickly against this Miami Dolphins. I have the oh. 0-6 Panthers at number three. Yo, Now you're probably thinking, Brick, what are you doing? Why are they number three when they're 0-6? Well, these other teams ahead of them deserve to be lower because of just how pathetic they've been. <laughs> but these Panthers teams, you know what? They know what they are, and they know that they are bad. <laughs> So, you know what? And that being said, we had Adam Thielen. He's on pace for 1,500 yards and 140 catches. So he's on pace to having a great season. The Panthers know they suck. They know that they've whiffed. They know that, you know, this team, they might not win a game this year, but at least they know what they are. And they're meeting expectations. We didn't expect them to be very good. We expected them to be at the bottom of their division. So if we include expectations along with poor performance, I think the Panthers fit just fine at number three. And they don't have a Hall of Fame coach. <laughs> and they don't have a Hall of Fame coach. Yeah. Mm. So, like, prefacing that, like, with expectations, if you have a Hall <laughs> of Fame coach, you should be better than one of the worst five teams in the league, I'm guessing. And that brings me to number two. We're talking about Hall of Fame head coaches. And this guy has won a Super Bowl, turned around the career of Hall of Famer Drew Brees, and yet... Somehow, some way, I don't know if it's the air. I don't know if it's all the DMT. I don't know if it's all the marijuana, mushrooms, whatever thing they're consuming in Denver. But good God, what the hell are we watching in Denver? I don't know if they've watched too much Dazed and Confused. I don't know if they've listened to too much Pink Floyd. But something is out of their mind in Denver. I don't know if they're seeing shit on the walls. I don't know if you're turning into a fucking cactus in their minds. I don't know what's going on in Denver. All I know is that what we see on the field here it scratches my head just how frustrating and just how bad this team really is. First of all, last year, you had a top five defense in the NFL. If your offense was just bottom 10 in the league, you would have been in the playoffs. And then you fire Nathaniel Hackett because he was the, all the problem in that league. It was all Nathaniel Hackett. Nobody else's fault. He goes to New York. They hire Sean Payton, who... You know, we saw him on the herd. I'm going to change everything. I'm going to change it. I'm going to make Denver great again. And this is what he brings instead. Yeah. Russell Wilson, who, believe it or not, is second in touchdowns. But you wouldn't know that with the eight points that they scored and the 92 yards that they scored against 
the Kansas City Chiefs. An absolute embarrassing performance. And then not only that, Randy Gregory, who you signed all the money to last year, he leaves, goes to 49ers, gets a play against the Browns, getting a sack. And now we have Jerry Judy acting like Antonio Brown. What the hell is going on here? And this is a guy who has never had a thousand yard season, who has <coughs> what? He had what? Two touchdowns last year. Yeah. This is the guy that's going to start acting like an alpha. Who are you, Jerry Judy? Who is he picked over? Who was he picked over? Oh, C.D. Lamb. Maybe you've heard of him. Did you see him last night? He did play pretty well. Who was that other guy? The guy in uh, uh, in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Justin Jefferson. <laughs> you had Justin Jefferson, but you take Jerry Judy. And now at this point, I think he should be really called Jerry Booty at this point because he's ass. Cortland Sutton is the only rising star in this team. And even him, he's a third wide receiver at best. And then Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Russell god damn wilson he was one of my favorite players growing up and it's like i've seen the rise and fall it'd be like if i was a big actor of leonardo dicaprio and then yeah. i see him 10 years later and he's decrepit he's old and he's a drug addict at this point i don't know what's going on with russell wilson but it's embarrassing it's cringe more cringe than his subway commercials more cringe than his let's ride all that bullshit this denver team is an absolute embarrassment to not just denver not just horses but also the NFL, because the Broncos are at number two. But it's not quite as bad, not nearly as bad as six-time Super Bowl champion head coach, arguably the greatest head coach of all time, the Patriots. The Patriots are the worst team in the NFL. This is a team that has not scored more than 17 points in the NFL at this point. No other team, not even the Panthers, not even the Broncos, not even the Bears, not even the Giants. They have scored more points this year. Not only that, they've been outscored by the Eagles kicker, the kicker, not even Jalen Hurts, not even A.J. Brown. They've been outscored by the kicker of the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. And last week they had a shot against beating the Raiders. And what do they do? Mac Jones has a safety to end the game. Mac Jones, this guy, this guy couldn't inspire a dead goose at this point. <laughs> this guy is an absolute embarrassment of a quarterback. I knew that they shouldn't have drafted him. But the worst part of all of this Outside of the Hall of Fame head coach, six-time Super Bowl champion, outside of the pedigree that the Patriots way has built the last 25 years, it's the fact that they're this bad. Yeah. They're just this pathetic in their fan base, just the absolute rotten armpit of the NFL. This is coming from a New England fan as well. Just the way they've been this pathetic at this point. Like, good God, tails tucked between their legs. Devontae Parker... The most uninspiring, I'm sorry I dropped it, speech I've ever heard in my entire life. More pathetic than the Bears. More pathetic than the Panthers. More pathetic than the Giants. And more pathetic than the Let's Ride Denver Broncos. The yeah. Patriots are the worst team in the NFL, according to the Brickyard.